Hello again guys, it's Carly from The Poetry of Nice and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, this is a channel all about reselling online. Uh, I sell on eBay, Etsy and Poshmark and I do it all while being a stay-at-home parent to three young boys. So if that sounds interesting to you, like something you'd want to learn about or just you want to come say hi, you enjoy the videos, then please do hit subscribe. I would love to have you come back and don't forget to say hello in the comments as well so that I can say hi back. So today I have another roundup for you guys. I am so excited by the way the Poshmark has gone for me this year. Um, I only started in April. I already have done well in sales, I feel, especially with it being a secondary platform. Um, and I'm just really enjoying using it. I, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's super social. Obviously, I've got to know quite a few people on there. I like buying on the platform. I love selling on the platform. I've really enjoyed the customer support. And um, I've already done a video showing you my top 25 sales in terms of how fast they sold. So this video is going to be telling you my most surprising sales. These are all items that I took a chance on or I didn't think uh, would sell and they kind of sat in my like not listed pile for a while and then I was blown away by uh, how quickly they sold or how quickly they got loads of likes, how much interest they had or by how much money they made. So by all means, stay tuned. I'm going to hop over to my computer and let me show you my, uh, my most surprising, exciting sales that I've had on Poshmark this year so far. All right, you guys. So here we are over by the laptop and I'm going to show you the items that for me were... Um, Technically, the 35 is the number I've gone with here, but um, since we have three platforms, I figured I would get a good uh, example across the board of what I'm talking about. But 35 most surprising um, sales that I've had in 2018. Um, so I've picked quite a cross section because there's lots of different reasons why a sale would surprise me. Something sold quickly, something that I thought would never sell, sold, uh, something that I thought would fly off the shelf, didn't move at all. Um, so I'm going to give you an example on Poshmark, Etsy and eBay of a bunch of stuff that falls into those categories that really just came to mind when I was reflecting on this as we get towards the end of the year. Okay, so let's start in Poshmark. This first piece I have picked um, for the latter reason of it surprised me that it... Um, that it sold. <laughs> it surprised me that it sold. It surprised me that it sold so quickly. It sold within a week. Um, as you can see, it's Talbot's. Um, and I just didn't think much of the style. And I think that keyword um, is, keywords here probably did it a huge favor. Um, it had like this kind of ruffle thing happening. <laughs> I did, it's not something that I would have equated with Poshmark, put it that way. It was a size extra large, which was most likely in its favor. Um, but I did choose to use keywords like prairie, bib, cozy, um, those kind of things, which I think are probably were quite helpful when listing this piece, because otherwise I just, this just doesn't seem something to me that like it would be super stylish necessarily in terms of the way Poshmark likes to market itself. And um, so I, this sold for $25 and I bought it for $1. And like I said, it sold in less than a week. So that was just something I wanted to share with you guys. Like don't write off Talbus necessarily, but do have a good long, hard think about the type of keywords you're using and how they're going to be, um, you know, utilize on that particular platform. I know Prairie is a pretty big one. Bib style is a pretty big one. Um, cozy knit sweaters and things like that are definitely things that people search for as we get into fall and winter. So to be able to pop those in the title is probably fairly helpful. Okay, on to the next one. Do, do, do. Oh no, it's going to take forever. Okay. And um, this one you would have seen in my fastest sales videos, most likely, but it is worth mentioning again. And um, this sold in less than, I think it was about half an hour of being listed. It was so quick that this sold. And um, this cost me less than 50 cents because it was in filler bag. It was a two piece set, obviously by Soma. Here is the tag. If you're wondering what that looks like. Um, and I was just really surprised it sold for, um, I think I had it listed for 40. I sent out a best offer to Likers um for 35 and it only had two likes in those um sort of 30 minutes or less but obviously somebody was very keen and so for 50 cents it sold for 35 dollars that is a pretty good flip and that is um soma is one of those brands that i've had similar experiences with of things moving very quickly for very close to my original asking price so i wanted to go ahead and throw that in here because I just didn't realize that Soma pajamas and stuff can move that way. I have a hard time with Soma clothing and loungewear, but they're like night shirts and pajamas so far, I've had some really positive experiences with and obviously some good price points there. All right, onwards. She says, come on, you can do it. <laughs> I don't know why my computer's deciding to go slow. Here we go. Um, okay, so this one was a surprise simply because I didn't think it 
had any kind of chance of selling on Poshmark. This is definitely something that I would have assumed I would have sold on Etsy just from past experience. Um, it wasn't any kind of particular brand. Let me scroll down and see what I, Olympic exposure. Yeah, I, I don't know much about it. It was a 2X. Um, the style was, you know, kind of cool if you're into that like 90s shell suit, possibly slightly 80s, um, you know, color block type scenario. Um, but other than that, it just wasn't something that I would assume Poshmark would have scooped up. But it sold quickly within about a week of listing and it sold for its full asking price without any kind of offers. Um, I got this for about a dollar at a rummage sale and it sold for the $50. So, and it's not the only vintage windbreaker either that I have sold so quickly. Um, I'll be doing a different video about my favorite vintage sales um, on these three platforms. Uh, they'll be coming up shortly and you'll probably see a few windbreakers and some examples of what to look for in that video. So if that sounds good, go ahead and subscribe because I'm looking forward to sharing that information with you guys. Okay. Um, this was also featured, I think, on my fastest what, uh, fastest flips because this sold in about a day or so, less than 48 hours pretty much for sure. Um, and I was surprised again. Now, this was at the beginning of September, so it may have been like a Halloween purchase. But this was something I picked up just because I thought it was cool for no other reason than I was like, I just can't leave that behind. <laughs> um, uh, the sizing was a bit strange. You can see here there seems to be a discrepancy, but all measurements were here. There was no size label, so I had to provide all of that. Um, and it sold like I said, really quickly for that full asking price of $45. And it cost me a dollar or less at a rummage sale as well. So that surprised me again on Poshmark that a vintage piece like that would go so quickly. And um, this surprised me just because I pass a lot of this kind of stuff up. And um, for whatever reason, I did this one. I think it was, again, a filler bag situation. So I figured out oh, I might as well just throw it in and see what happens. And um, it was a vintage T-shirt, vintage meaning 1998 is what it said, like, down here. And you can see I put that in the title, um, which doesn't that make you feel old now? <laughs> um, and obviously the movie being lost in space. I believe this was the movie with, like, Matt LeBlanc from Friends, you know, like, whatever. But um, the back was kind of cool as well, how it said, get lost. Um, this is another one that I went ahead and styled. You can see I did the side knot and I uh, rolled the cuffs as well. Otherwise, down here, you'll see a picture of the full t-shirt as is. Um, but yeah, I was pretty darn surprised that this was something that sold so quickly. Again, it was probably a couple of weeks that took it to sell, but it sold for that full asking price of $25. Um, yeah, and it cost me about 50 cents, if that. So apparently old, like, well, movie t-shirt, sure, but I wouldn't even say this had like a cult following unless I'm, you know, living under a rock. But Lost in Space isn't one that kind of like pops to mind when I think of that. But, you know, apparently I was wrong and somebody loved it. All right, this one I wanted to share with you because I had absolutely no idea about the brand. And quite frankly, I still don't really know about the brand. Let me begin this by showing you the tag. Um, this is what it looked like. As soon as I saw this, I knew that was a European size. Um, it was a very nice uh, wool, like obviously you see here, 70% wool. It was made in Italy. A really nice jacket. I mean, like a sky blue with a gray detailing. It was obviously hooded. Um, like large oversized pockets and buttons. It was really a beautiful piece, but that was about all I had to go on. Um, fabric content, the fact that it was made in Italy, and I just really liked the lag and look style of it. Obviously, I made sure to put the word lag and look in there because that is pretty much this thing's selling point. Also, I couldn't find comps really for this at all. Um, I think I found one thing on some very random website, but other than that, it was just really hard to find anything. So I just went with the style and priced it fairly high and decided to see what would happen. Um, I can't remember what I priced it at, but it was maybe around $60, $70, and I got a best offer of $40. Um, it cost me $3 at a rummage sale. I, like I said, I knew nothing about it. It was kind of just like giving it a go. So $40 made me very happy indeed. Uh, sometimes you just have to trust your instinct you know as you do this for long enough you start to recognize quality you start to recognize things you know pieces for what they are and the way that you'll be able to sell them using those keywords effectively you know how you're going to photograph them all that kind of stuff and you sometimes you just need to roll with it and trust those instincts all right next piece uh, okay, so this is Prana. Most of us know the brand Prana. I'm going to go ahead and show you down here the label. There we go. That's the like the newer label. Uh, size 8, so a fairly good size. But the reason I want to include these is I pick up Prana pretty much any time I find it if it's a 
couple of dollars. Other than that, I usually walk away from it because it takes a really long time to sell for me recently. Um, and it really doesn't go for that much. Shirts for me will go for between like 16 and 25 if I'm lucky. Um, but I had sold a pair of leggings at one point and they had gone really quickly and for around $22. So when I found these and they were like a skinny jean, I thought that it's either going to be really good or really bad. Um, the, obviously, the style is uh, pretty good, just being a skinny denim jean. Um, the color, like this reddish color, was... Uh, it could go either way, but I decided to give it a try. I paid about $3 at half price for these at a thrift store, and they sold for their $30 there. I think I had them priced either $35 or $40, but I got a best offer, and they sold quickly for me. Um, so that sort of gave me the mental note that I wanted to share with you guys. When it comes to Prana, things like the skinny jeans, like the, the more current jeans, and um, the leggings and things like that, and possibly even the dresses, depending on the style and how old the piece is, I would almost always jump on if it's like maybe $6 or less, say. Um, but then the tank tops or the blouses, that kind of thing, I would I would second guess it unless it was $1 or $2. So that's just my 10 cents there, 2 cents, whatever you say. <laughs> my opinion on Piranha. Okay, this piece I wanted to share with you, it was surprising to me, again, because of the platform it sold on. Poshmark like ate this thing up. So this was up for just a few days um, and it got 14 likes almost immediately. Um, I had a lot of people with interest. I had several offers. Um, I actually picked this up for, I've got 25 cents down here um, at a rummage sale. It was a filler bag again, one of my regular ones that I go to pretty much once a month. But I just loved the style. I loved the way that the sort of legs were cut and the halter and the deep V. I just thought it was a really fantastic piece. Obviously, this was a vintage piece. Um, it dated to around the 70s when I was looking in. It had this amazing floral uh, detail. It was also a union-made piece, which helped me to date it. Um, and, yeah, I just thought it was amazing. So did other people, apparently. This actually got sold in a bundle of about four pieces. So although it says $35 there, chances are I was a little bit less because I do usually send out, have a discount that applies anyway, and I usually go ahead and send out another discount on top of that for people who want to bundle several items. Um, but it still would have sold probably around the $30 mark when all is taken into consideration. Um, and I just wanted to share this with you because it's really important to remember, like, this is not the first piece of vintage swimwear that I have sold on Poshmark at all. I have sold quite a lot at this point. Um, and I believe next year when it all rolls around and I, you know, I'm there during uh, early spring and all that kind of stuff that I will be moving vintage swimwear again. So definitely don't overlook that when it comes to Poshmark. There is a marketplace for it. All right. This one I wanted to share with you is because, once again, a brand that I just don't know, but it's an instinct piece. So J-Mode was the brand. I'm going to go ahead. It was new with tags, and that was another reason I grabbed it. This was actually 50 cents at a rummage sale. Um, there is the tag right there over here. Um, and when I looked it up, it seemed to be sold exclusively online. There didn't seem to be anywhere like brick and mortar as far as I could see that stocked it so I had a few things going for it I really liked the style I knew I could use like boho festival as keywords which were pretty good back there at the beginning you know like springtime beginning of summer had pockets on it was which is a really nice feature and I just really liked the piece and um, so I went and grabbed it 50 cents who cares right and it sold for let me double check it sold for the 30 dollars that you see here um and like I said 50 cents so Trust those instincts. Sometimes style rules over uh, brand name. Actually, quite often, because here's another piece I'm going to show you. This was a handmade piece as far as I could see. I found this at a rummage sale. It was a dollar. It was in with all the jackets. And I just thought it was really cool. So I went with kimono style as a description just because of the way the sleeves were cut and the kind of the open front scooping and stuff. But really, I don't know much about how else I would you know, describe the style. Um, like I said, there were no tags or anything. This piece appeared to be handmade. It had almost like a, a dolman type sleeve happening, which I guess kind of still falls into the kimono style. You can see here how it was all stitched together. So I'm pretty certain at this point it was a handmade piece. But for a book lover, this thing was really cool. <laughs> so going on print and style alone, I went ahead and grabbed it and it sold for $28, which was a um, an offer that I sent out. I think it had it listed maybe at $35, sent an offer 
or received an offer. It was a while ago now, but for $28, and like I said, it cost me a dollar. No brand name, no tags, no nothing. Still sold on Poshmark. This piece as well, no particular brand. Um, actually, it was one of those brands, let me show you the tag, that was... Um, like you can put a print on any piece of clothing and then have it sent to you online. And so someone obviously uh, selected this Hive and B print um, and I grabbed it. It was half price at a thrift store for $3.50 and I went ahead and grabbed it because I thought it was awesome. The print was just really cool and I listed it and literally half an hour later somebody bought it at the full asking price of $25. Um, so once again, evidence that print and style rule oftentimes over brand. Okay, and then this was the last Poshmark one I wanted to uh, show you right now. So these are Paige jeans. They are the newer tag. You can see right here, this is the newer tag. They were a smaller size of 25, but the reason I want to share them with you, I got them for 50 cents at a rummage sale. I picked them up even though they had these stretch marks here. Obviously, they are well disclosed, the stretch marks. There's, they're in the description. There's several pictures here that show them. Many people on... I won't say anywhere specific, but like, you know, some of my Facebook groups that I like to follow because that's how you learn is learning from is listening to other people. Um, I had shared at one point that they had sold for the full asking price of $35 and people couldn't believe that I had sort of had listed them, perhaps had the audacity to list them. I don't know, <laughs> but I had and it's full disclosure. You know, I just wanted to see what would happen. They sold at that full asking price and they sold quickly. Um, reality is when you wear skinny jeans and they have this kind of stretch out, oftentimes when they're on, you can't see the stretch. But the person left positive feedback. They were happy with their purchase. I don't know what else to say other than the buyer knew what they were buying. They purchased and they were happy with it. Um, my point here being, I don't intentionally buy damaged items. Yes, this was low cost, so I decided to give it a go, 50 cents. That's absolutely fine. Um, but sometimes when we get home and we find items that are damaged, when they are a really good brand name, it can often be worth listing them anyway. Usually I would have done that on eBay and I would have gone the auction route. That's how I've done it many, many times in the past. Um, but I decided to put it up on Poshmark and see what would happen. And obviously there is something to be said for um, the Poshmark community and, you know, how they like to browse and purchase and things like that. Um, and I just think it's a really fun platform. I am so in love with Poshmark right now and it's buyers and it's customer service. I can't say enough good things about it. Okay. On to Etsy. Um, so I want to show you this little guy. He was small. Um, and I want to show you him because, again, it was something that had no other comps on Etsy, at least at the time. There was no other of these Baba plush toys. I grew up watching this kid's show, so I knew what he was as soon as I saw, as soon as I saw him. And I bought him for 25 cents um, at a rummage sale. And he sold for $24.95 plus shipping. Um, so, again... We often talk about, you know, making sure you check your comps, especially before purchasing um, and doing your research. And I absolutely 100% stand behind that. But sometimes you do have the only one that's out there. Sometimes you just have to give it a go. You know, some random person out there looking for a Baba the Elephant <laughs> plush tie, and mine was the one that they found. That's great. Just because there is another one listed on that platform at this time doesn't mean that there isn't a market for it necessarily. And when your cost of goods is so low, it can often pay off to, again, trust those instincts and give it a try. All right, next Etsy one. Oh, yeah, so I want to, uh, so this originally, obviously this is an embroidered, like, patch type scenario. Um, so this was from 2000, as you can see on it right here. And the trick to Etsy is vintage is like 20 years old, so that's 1998 or older. Um, so I couldn't sell this as a vintage piece, so I had to list this in the craft category <laughs> because technically it is it's a patch it's something that could be applied and used during a craft so I kind of weasel my way around there I suppose you could say a little bit but the reason I want to share was this this was actually a vintage t-shirt that I bought vintage 2000 you know what I'm saying it was a, a Disney t-shirt that I bought at a yard sale for 50 cents and when I got it home I realized that with it being white it was it was really covered in stains like there was nothing I could do so for quite a while I played with the idea of 
you need to donate this, you know, or can I, can I crop it and do this? And there was just too much wear to it, like on the chest area and stuff like that. So I decided to give it a try and just cut out in the t-shirt, the patch scenario. Like I didn't know how anyone was going to work with that because it's t-shirt material. Um, but I don't also don't know that much about crafts and what all goes into it. So I thought might as well give it a try. I kind of want to rescue this because it's really cool. And someone did buy it for $14.95 for this little cut out of a t-shirt um so there you go upcycling it is a thing <laughs> i think poshmark and etsy are both pretty darn good when it comes to that okay this one surprised me because i i don't know again this was another one that didn't have comps so i kind of threw a number at it and decided to see what all would happen and somebody bought it isn't that just so nice when that happens so i bought this for two dollars roughly at a um thrift store it was on like a half price 50 percent off day it's from barney the dinosaur it's baby bop or whatever her name is and it's it was a one piece and then the headdress as well it was a little built-in tail had the zipper on the back and um, it was overall actually in pretty good condition um you know a little bit of wear because it's from the 90s and whatnot but overall it was it was pretty good from 1992 so i threw a number at it and left it alone to see what happened and somebody bought it within about three months i would say for 49.95 plus shipping so there you go look out for your baby bop costumes people they're hot apparently and <laughs> um, this was another one that i wanted to sh uh, to show you because i procrastinated on listing this for the longest time i have done so well in the past selling vintage bed sheets specifically character bed sheets like disney and then other sort of 80s 90s characters things like that um recently that has slowed down for me a little bit i know that people buy it as like um to use in crafts or uh, making clothes that kind of thing and i've done really well but i have one or two pieces that honestly have just hung around for a while I cannot figure out why <laughs> I don't understand why they're not selling it maybe I need to do a video on that like the things that are not selling that I just don't understand why they won't sell because everything about them is right if you think that's a good idea for a video please let me know in the comments and I will make that for you guys if that is uh, something that y'all would would enjoy or get a kick out of <laughs> anyway um so this is like a major league baseball it's from the 90s it was actually wasn't sheets looking at it now it was um window valances <laughs> and one twin sheet okay fair enough it, who knows right it was just a bunch of fabric essentially that was meant to be for a kid's room I, mean, I picked this up for about 50 cents i think it was um at a rummage sale and i put it off for the longest time because i just thought who in the world's gonna want this <laughs> And I think that goes to show that sometimes we need to sell like what we enjoy. Like obviously I'd looked at this and just didn't see much value to it at all. I just thought it was kind of boring. But then I'm not into baseball. So, you know, that that pretty much is what I'm left with. Um, but I listed it and it sold really down quickly within a week or two for my asking price, which was $24.95. And it cost me 50 cents. It was super easy to ship. They paid shipping. You know, it just goes to show it's not always what you think is going to sell sometimes you have to remember just because you're not shopping for it somebody else is and um, this i wanted to show you because it sold really quickly as well and i just wouldn't have thought it i picked it up for one dollar at a yard sale and i wasn't sure why i kind of left thinking why on earth did i grab this thing um it was from the 90s it was a mini backpack um obviously denim Pooh bear on it yeah you know just was what it was i figured i'd grab it and throw it up and see what happens because isn't that always fun and it sold really quickly for 19.95 like within a couple of days if i remember correctly so there we go um this another fabric find i'm very hit or miss with vintage fabrics i really enjoy selling them i find that they sit quite a while this one actually wasn't too bad it's probably a couple of months but i found this at an estate sale um and it was a huge huge like i wonder if i have a I should do somewhere. I did. I couldn't find too much out about the brand. I did have a picture of the selvage and stuff there. There were some stains and marks. You can see, you know, it was, certainly was not a perfect piece. Um, there we go. That gives you an idea of how much was there. And obviously I measured it out and put it all in my description as well. Um, but overall, it was really a beautiful couple of pieces there. Um, and like I said, I paid around a dollar at the estate sale. The person actually said to me, oh my gosh, we just want this gone. There's there's fabric everywhere. Um, and it sold for $59.95 despite it having the marks and all that kind of stuff. It was from the 60s. I did manage to uh, lower that, uh, like hone in on that, shall we say, with Markwood Fabrics. Um, 
And like I said, it took a month or two to sell, but $60 I'm pretty darn happy with, um, with a $1 investment. I don't know much about fabric. So if I miss something and it should have gone for like $500, you can feel free to tell me that won't hurt my feelings. I would like to know for next time, but it took its time to sell. So $60, I was pretty darn, pretty darn pleased with. All right, last Etsy one. Here we go. Okay, I want to show you this because it is so perfectly random. <laughs> I love selling 90s gear. It's one of my absolute favorite things to sell. And yes, streetwear and vintage Tommy Hilfiger spell outs and all that kind of stuff is really full. But I also really like the random like crap that I remember from my childhood. Um, so this was a fanny pack, which I love to sell anyway, that was like inflatable on the front with a mini aquarium inside. I just don't know what else to say about it other than... I, I couldn't leave it. Like, how could you possibly leave that to go to a landfill? I don't know. So it costs about 25 cents at a rummage sale, fill a bag. I keep repeating that, but that's where I like to shop. Um, and it was just really cool. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. It was all plasticky and, oh my gosh, it was just 90s incarnate. So um, I paid 25 cents and it sold for 19.95 in less than a month. <laughs> so, you know, yay for the 90s. It's coming back, I hear. Um... Okay, uh, so I want to show you this item because it sold quickly the first time within a couple of hours of listing and it got returned for fit and then it sold again almost right away within a couple of hours listing. So I wanted to share it with you because I'm surprised by that. <laughs> and therein is the theme of our video, I suppose. Um, so Jones, New York, it was an 18W, that was the size, just a general floral print. I wouldn't say there's anything spectacular about this piece, if I'm honest, but for whatever reason, it sold quickly twice consecutively. So I wanted to go ahead and share that information with you. I paid a dollar at a rummage sale um, and the last time that it sold, it was for a best offer of $24.95. Um, no, it didn't for $22.75. Pardon me. Um, but yeah, you know, it's good to know those brands that, that move quickly. And here is another one I wanted to share with you as well. Come on, you can do it. Um, so this is a pair of jeans, she says. Oh, come along. Do we need to refresh? I think my computer's had it, you guys. Let's refresh and see what happens. Thank you for being patient. Oh, hello. Okay, um, so cut from the cloth. So this is a brand that has been super missed for me so far. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Um, I just have never really fared well with it. I don't know if it's the cut or the size or whatever it is. But anyway, it's taken a long time to move for me. For whatever reason, this pair of jeans flew out the door when I listed it in the same day. They got returned for fit again, just like the last one I showed you. And uh, I tried them on yesterday and decided they were too short on me because they were petite. And I'm not a petite, but I wanted to try anyway. And I thought, okay, forget it. I'll just list it. And 10 minutes later, they sold. Uh, I took a best offer of $20 and I had $3 in them. Um, so yes, these are obviously there's a dark wash to these. They are just a straight leg. They have no specific name to them. They're a size 12 petite. Uh, I don't know. Here you go, straight leg. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but apparently they're moving right now. So I figured I'd give you all a heads up for that. Okay. Next item on eBay. Um, okay, I want to share this with you because it was a fail. I've had this thing in my store for well over a year and I cannot understand why it wouldn't sell. It's a good size, 22, 24. It's new with tags, originally $80. It ha it's a nice style, like you can see here, it's like a velvet chevron print. Um, I just don't understand. It's such a nice little black dress. Um, but I, I couldn't give it away. I've had it on 99 cents auction, like everything. I just couldn't get rid of it. Um, so I paid about $5 for this at the thrift store and I figured newer tags and, you know, there's a slightly larger size or whatever. This thing is going to do so well. It's so cute. I hope someone loves it. It's so nice for like Christmas or uh, New Year's Eve or whatever. I couldn't move it. Um, sold eventually for best offer twenty two forty nine. And hallelujah, I about did a happy dance when that thing went out the door. Um, this I want to show you because this sold within a week to two weeks, probably close to a week, I think, of listing. And it surprised me because it's Ed Hardy. And I feel like most of us think of Ed Hardy as being like super over. <laughs> um, I paid 50 cents for this at a rummage sale and it sold for best offer. No, it sold for full asking price. I tell a lie of $22.99. And it had quite a lot of love on Poshmark as well. Um, it does have an all over print, which I think probably helped it a little bit. Um, but yes, that is not something that, well, I should say Ed Hardy is something that I have passed over quickly in the past and I actually would second guess that now the way that this sort of had 
a lot of action on both platforms. Um, so yeah, once again, wanted to share that for you. Don't necessarily overlook it. This is one of my favorite sales. This is definitely going to be in that favorite vintage videos. I loved this thing. So I found this at a rummage sale. As soon as I saw it, I absolutely fell head over heels for it. Um, it was from approximately the 50s. You can often date from the tag um, Vintage Clothing Guild. I believe that's right. Don't quote me, but Google that. It will, you will find it from there. Um, they have a lot of things where you can date labels um, and it's super useful, such a fantastic resource. Well, this piece was awesome. It was in such good shape, obviously like a bathing suit, but extremely modest. Um, anyway, I sort of had it listed at various uh, different prices. I had an auction, I had plenty of watches, but no one had ever sort of bitten as it were. Um, and it sold probably within about six months, I would say, for the asking price you see there, $79.99 plus shipping. Um, and I paid a dollar at the rummage sale. I just love this piece. I had to show you because I was surprised, but at the same time, I was very thrilled that someone else thought it was as, as amazing as I did. Um, okay, this piece I had to show you just because like, what the heck are we looking at right here, right? <laughs> um, it was the brand, let me see, what was the brand? Casual Corner. So I don't think that's anything like particularly exciting, right? Um, and it did have a little bit of damage. I actually repaired it by hand and then disclosed it, as you can see there. I had a very strong perfume smell that I had to disclose as well, but the person did not mind. They were so excited and happy about this piece. Um, and I just, what the heck? How could you possibly leave that behind at a yard sale or a thrift store? I don't even know. Um, I took the best offer of $25 because obviously the perfume smell is not ideal and the damage as well, not ideal. Um, and um, yeah, I paid about a dollar for it. I just, what the heck? <laughs> Space theme. Um, okay, this I wanted to sell you, show you as well. Um, so I thought I was going to do a lot better on this than I did, but there were several reasons. I actually ended up taking a best offer of $25. Um, and I paid about a dollar at a, a yard sale. So, you know, that's not too bad at all. But unfortunately, there were some light marks to it, um, which I can, there you go, you can kind of see on some of these ones here. It wasn't anything huge, but there was a lot of, you know, some like discoloration around the collar and things like that. What a cool label. I love that. Um, and unfortunately, the, uh, let me show you right here, these straps here, only one of them would cinch, the other one wouldn't, and I just could not repair it. I hope that person managed to repair it, I just enjoyed it as it was, but I think if it was in much better condition, I think I would have done really well with this piece. It's just so interesting and so incredibly 80s, and it was a slightly larger size as well as an 1820, but because of those defects, I took the $25, but still, I was pretty impressed that, that this sold. Um... All right. Uh, okay, so a lot of us know about vintage prom dresses at this point. Um, this thing was in a filler bag, so I have it down as being about $2 because it probably took up, like, when it was all scrunched up, maybe a fifth of a trash bag. Um, and I took the best offer of $50. It did take a little while to sell, but it had watches consistently. I knew it would move eventually, and I can only imagine the impression that somebody made rocking up to prom wearing that. <laughs> I hope they loved it. Um, okay, this I wanted to share with you because it really surprised me. Um, so, Torrid. I usually do okay with Torrid. Like, it moves pretty quick in the larger sizes for me, but usually around, like, the $18 to $20 mark, depending on what it is. Um, so I'll pick it up if it's a buck or two. I had no idea about the swimwear, necessarily. I picked this up for a dollar. Um, I thought it was really nice. However, it was a zero, so, like, a size large, not a plus size. Um, and... You know, it had going for it that it was a swim dress. A lot of people that I know personally seek that out because it's hard to find in stores. And they do prefer the modesty. Um, but when I started looking at comps, I realized Torrid swimwear does really, really, really well. Um, so there's a tip for you right there. It sold for best offer of $32. I had $1 in it and I had plenty of offers and plenty of likes and things like that. And quite a few people added to a bundle, but just not follow three. Um, but it, there you go. It sold on eBay. So... Um, okay, if you see these at a yard sale, I would suggest you pick them up. Um, the pens, actually, fun fact, are, I'm going to show you one right here, these old-fashioned versions. I don't know why that's upside down. Why did I do that? <laughs> oh, no, they're all weird. 
Well, it's sold, so who cares? But that's not good, is it? Anyway, um, <laughs> how professional. Uh, the pen's actually, like, that older version, you can't buy that version anymore, like, new in store. So you have to get it on eBay um, or, you know, somewhere secondhand. And the books, you know, you can still buy them, but they're about 13 to $15 a piece. Um, so what I did was I actually got a huge load. And I'm going to show you this one as well. This was all one. So I had two pens, I had a charging wire, another charging wire, I had the software, the case, and all kinds of books. So I split it into two, just because I felt like I could get some more money that way, and I think I was right. So this one was 20 books, and it was a variety of, like, there's some Nickelodeon in there, there's the odd Disney one, because I think I had a couple of repeats, and then, you know, some other stuff like Scooby-Doo and I Spy, Dinosaurs, a bunch of you know, other little bits and pieces, um, the Leap Prof own books and stuff like that. And I threw in the pen and the charger and this sold for the full asking price of $49.99. Um, and I had about $5 in this and that all together. Then I went ahead and I took the Disney books to make like a Disney lot. Um, so there was 11 books here total. As you can see, they are all Disney. Some of them did have, did have some condition issues. You can see here that didn't hurt it. And it sold on sale for $37.49. So obviously that's close to a $90 uh, gross sales amount there or whatever and when I had about five dollars in it so that's definitely not too bad at all I feel like I see these at yard sales frequently a lot of people have moved on to the newer software the newer pens that kind of thing but there are still folks out there who are looking to replace or get another one of this pen I know me having two kids I'm forever looking to have the exact same thing of of something <laughs> so that they stop fighting spoiler they don't stop fighting but um yeah so Leapfrog, reading systems, the older versions, and maybe the newer versions too, and the books, if you can find them cheap, like, you know, when people are clearing out garages or their kids' stuff, grab them. They do well. Um, okay, these were pretty much a shot in the dark. I found them for a dollar at a rummage sale. They are hand-painted and hand-bedazzled, um, but they were in good shape. Um, they were, you know nice and clean, and there was, uh, they were like this kind of painting of these uh, piano keys and stuff like that. I mean, I, I grabbed them because I was like, someone's out there somewhere <laughs> will love these. And I had to wait patiently for about two months of them being listed, but they did sell for the full asking price of $34.99 and I paid a dollar for them. So, you know, this kind of like upcycling or items being modified and things like that, don't always shy away from it because honestly... I'm finding that those kind of things, as long as it's disclosed and the person knows what they're getting, people can really enjoy that. Um, I wanted to show you this little guy uh, because I had about six of him and I got them for free. Um, I've told this story before in a video, I know, but I was looking at them at yard sale and I asked, how much are they? And the woman was like, oh my God, just take them. <laughs> you can just have them. And so I took them home. I cleaned them up a bit. I couldn't clean up everything, but I sort of uh, labeled them and numbered them and I listed them on eBay and Etsy. I sold one on Etsy and four on eBay in total, all for $19.99. Like I said, they cost me absolutely nothing and I kept one for myself because I loved him and they were from 1995 this I wanted to show you because this was definitely a surprise this sold really quickly I had offers um really fast I didn't realize carnival cruise stuff like I had this sitting in my like death pile if that's what you want to call it for the longest time because I thought yeah who cares about carnival well apparently a lot of people do and um, so it sold the same afternoon that I listed it I took best offer of $16.99 um, and I picked it up for like 25 cents uh, I paid a dollar for this at a yard sale. It did have a few light marks on it. I'm going to show you the label right here. Made in the USA. Um, I love this kind of vintage Disney bedding and whatnot. This was quilted, so it's not ideal because people can't really upcycle that into clothing. But the woman who bought it from me said that she had been looking for it forever and she was using it as bedding for whatever reason. Um, and it sold for the full asking price of $34.99. And it sold within two weeks. Actually, I think it was in a within a week or less. It sold quickly. <laughs> it's what I'm trying to get out here. It did have a few light marks. It didn't stop it. Um, yeah, I just love picking that stuff up. And the final thing I'm going to show you is, so Adidas, Adidas, however you want to say it. Um, I don't always pick it up, but I found this two-piece. It was at a filler bag, so I grabbed it. I put it down as $2. It was probably less than I paid for it, quite honestly. But I figured I might as well grab it since it's a little set, you know, like maybe that'll 
Maybe that'll go in its favor. And it did because it sold for a best offer of $40 within a couple of weeks of being listed. Um, so now when I find these like tracksuit sets um, of like the pants and the zip up tops or whatever together, I will pretty much always grab them if the price is right, because $40 is not too bad at all. Um, OK, Oh, and deep breath. Okay, that is everything that I had to show you today. Um, I hope that those were interesting to you. I hope that, um, you know, maybe you can share some of your surprising sales with me. The more that we sort of uh, share some of these things, uh, that's how we learn, right? And we know what to look for. And I don't feel remorseful for sharing with you guys because they are so few and far between like I don't think everybody's going to go out tomorrow and find a 101 Dalmatians vintage bedding set I just don't think that that's going to happen necessarily um so I don't mind telling you guys that hey I found this I love to find it I was surprised because it sold really quickly for a good amount of money and hopefully we all get to learn and you know, learn from each other and share and all that kind of stuff. And um, so tell me your coolest sales down below. I really want to know, like, what is the sale that has surprised you the most this year? And what platform did you sell it on? How much did you pay? What did you make in the end? All right, you guys, I'm going to hop off now. And um, thank you so much for stopping by. I would love it if you would like this video. And I would love it even more if you would subscribe and come hang out again. And I will talk to you all soon. Bye, guys.